Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> the Kraft Cheese Company, makers of Parquet March, and a complete line of famous quality food products, presents Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve. Kraft brings you The Great Gildersleeve every week at this time, written by John Whedon and Sam Moore, music by Claude Sweden. the great Gildersleeve in just a moment, which is my moment to tell you about a mighty big meal getting help. It's the Lickin' Good Macaroni and Cheese you cook in just seven minutes with a box of Kraft Dinner. The new Kraft Dinner that gives you light and fluffy macaroni with a really rich cheddar cheese flavor through and through. Now, maybe you know how Kraft Dinner's macaroni cooks in just seven minutes flat. Maybe you know how the Kraft grated that also comes in the Kraft Dinner box lets you sprinkle cheese flavor all through that macaroni fast. But let me tell you, if you haven't tasted Kraft Dinner lately, you're in for a surprise. Now, Kraft has found a way to give you the Kraft grated with a fuller, more satisfying cheddar cheese flavor that combines perfectly with the fluffy, tender macaroni. You're bound to get compliments on the macaroni and cheese you cook the seven-minute way with Kraft Dinner. Try it tomorrow. Join our old friend Gildersleeve. Several days have passed since his attempt to introduce Judge Hooker's lady friend, Dolores Del Rey, to Summerfield Society, a party which ended somewhat unpleasantly for both guests and hosts. Three days later, Gildersleeve is still trying to patch up the damage. Right now, for instance, we find him stepping into the barber shop to square things with Floyd Muncy. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, hello there. Hello, Floyd. Nice day, isn't it? Nothing extra? No, I guess you're right. Uh, thought I might just have a haircut. Haircut? What for? Cut your hair last week, day before the big blowout. The uh, blowout? Uh, it was more of a washout. I wouldn't argue with you. I'm sorry about the whole thing, Floyd. Uh, if I said anything that night that seemed unfriendly, I want to apologize. It wasn't anything unfriendly, Commissioner. You just threw me out of your house. <laughs> well, I apologize. That's okay. No, it's not. How could I have done such a thing? Throw a guest out of my house. On a cold night, too. You don't know the half of it. When I got to my house, the wife wouldn't let me in. No? Where'd you sleep, Floyd? Busted in the cellar door and slept on the sofa in the living room. That generally softens her up, but not this time. When she come down in the morning, she was still wound up like a cuckoo clock. Da, 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 da. <laughs> She'd never have given that party. We never should have went. It's always the same thing. Every time, she thinks I got my eye on some dame. But I ask you, Mr. Gildersleeve, did I get out of line in any way, shape, manner, or form? Not that I noticed. There's only one way I can figure it. She reads my mind. <laughs> oh. Say, uh, you know, that Miss Del Rey is quite a dish, if you don't mind my saying so. Miss Del Rey is nothing to me, Floyd. No? I was simply trying to help the lady get her dancing school started. And she walks right out of my party and goes off with Hooker. Yeah, that's gratitude. Yeah, well, she can have the old goat. Although what she sees in him, I can't imagine. Maybe the judge is more of a man than we've been figuring. I'm not interested in that question either, Floyd. Okay. Yeah, you didn't really want a haircut, did you, Commissioner? No, that was just a... I can wait. A towel, massage? No, thank you. Ought to be getting home, Floyd. My niece has been a little under the weather lately. Must remember to stop at the drugstore on the way. Better be going. I just wanted to square things up a little, Floyd. Consider him square, Mr. Gildersleeve. These things happen, that's all. Drop in any time. Yeah, thanks. I will, Floyd. And if you should run into the senorita, give her a hot tamale for me. Oh, that's all over. <laughs> Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. A 
What can I do for you this afternoon? I want a thermometer, please, Peavy. A thermometer? You want a clinical thermometer or one for the weather? I wanted to take somebody's temperature with. Yeah, that's good. I haven't got the other kind. You uh, running a fever, Mr. Gill, I think? No, Mr. Peavy. My niece Marjorie's had a little something. Streptococcus. The doctor won't let her get up till her temperature's normal. A wise precaution. A wise precaution. Yeah, I suppose so. Now, here's just a ticket, I'd say. A dollar and seventy-five. Dollar seventy-five for a thermometer? Confound it, Peavy. The kids break them all the time. They're not worth it. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> this is a precision instrument. Tested by seven different people at the factory. Yeah, well, I'll bet none of them tried dropping it. Or sticking it in a baked potato. <laughs> Leroy did that with the last one. Well, of course, they're only... Yeah, never people. mind, Peavy. Just wrap it up. I'll take it. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I wanted to tell you how sorry I am we couldn't come to your party Saturday night. Well, you didn't miss a thing, Peavy. You were mighty lucky. And, uh, couldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Peavy and I went to a lecture on trees. Trees? How fast they grow, how old they get to be, what the bark is for, and so on. I couldn't seem to get my mind on it. Well, I wish I'd been there. That's funny. All the time I was looking at those lantern slides, I kept wishing I was at your party. I've got an idea. This Miss Dolores Del Rey must be quite a pippin. Oh, for heaven's sake, Pete. Oh, no offense, Mr. Gildersleeve. The lady is nothing whatever to me. Absolutely nothing. Well, that was my understanding, that it was Judge Hooker who had the prior claim. Hooker had no claim at all. Well, I thought he found her. What if he did? She's a woman, not a pocketbook. Yes. Yeah. And what's more, this whole question is a matter of great indifference to me. Put the thermometer on my bill, Peavy. I've got to go. Yes, sir. Shh. Mm. He's running more of a fever than he thinks. Leroy, is that you? Yeah. Your wife, Marge? How do you feel? Oh, much better, thanks. I feel fine. Uh, Marge, I brought you something. You did? What? My Red Rider pistol. You can sleep with it tonight if you like, under your pillow. Why, oh, Leroy, that's very sweet of you. You're sure you won't be needing it? No, I've got my hunting knife. I'll sleep with that. Well, that's very generous. Hey, you can keep it even. Go on, keep it. It's yours. Oh, I couldn't do that, Leroy. That'd leave you unarmed. Well, I'll lend it to you then, till you get well. I'll put it here on the table. You can reach it if you need it. Unless you'd like to hold it a while. I'll enjoy just having it there where I can look at it. Gosh, I'm sure glad you're feeling better, Marge. Oh, I am much better. You know, I got to thinking. I holler a lot, but gosh, if anything was to happen to you, well, I don't know who I'd fight with. <laughs> you don't need to worry about me. It was pretty bad, huh? What you had? Streptococcus? Yeah. Oh, it's just a sore throat, really. Is that all? Give me back my pistol. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding, Marge. We missed you these last few days, Uncle and me. It's not the same just two people eating together. Uncle gets awful quiet. You wouldn't know him. Just sits there stoking it in. <laughs> He's been kind of gruesome lately anyway. You know... I have a feeling he has something on his mind. You and me both. What do you suppose it could be? Well, it isn't business. What do you mean? You remember when he fell for Mrs. Ransom, how he used to go mooning around the house? Yes. You remember when he got all excited about Miss Goodwin there, couldn't even eat? Yes. Well, here we go again. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, you missed the party. You didn't get a look at that senorita. Boy, she's quiet. I think I heard him come in. Gosh, can you imagine what it would be like if he married her? Nothing but Spanish omelets, Spanish rice, Spanish onions. Hush, Do you suppose if we talk to him about it man to man and ask him to watch his step? Oh, that's the worst thing you could do. For heaven's sake, don't mention it. If we even... Well, what are you two rascals whispering about? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Hello, Uncle Mort. And how's my little princess this evening? Oh, much better. There's nothing the matter with me now. I feel fine. Well, we'll see about that. I hope you're right. I lent her my Red Rider pistol. Wasn't that nice of me? Oh, uh, that's fine, my boy. Been having a little Indian trouble around here lately? <laughs> Did you get a thermometer, Uncle Moore? Yeah, got it right here. I know I haven't any temperature. Well, we'll just see. Shake it down first, Unc, and hold on to it. Yeah, and you keep it out of the baked potatoes. <laughs> Remember, if it's still normal, I can get up for dinner. The doctor said so. We'll see, my dear. Open your mouth. 
That's it. Under your tongue. Now keep your mouth closed. Have to wait a couple of minutes. Kind of a day did you have? Did you eat any lunch? Oh, hello. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> no talking. The marmot won't work if you keep your mouth uh, open. <laughs> or is it? I mean, yeah. <laughs> That's it. How's your throat? Still sore? No, it feels much better. Uh, 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 uh. Keep it closed. <laughs> kind of a day did you have, Leroy? Did you distinguish yourself in your studies? And if not, why not? Uh, so you... Speaking of that, Unc... Yes? It, uh, it seems I got my report card today. Well, you did, eh? And what does that report card say, Leroy? Well, I don't want you to think I didn't try, Unc. I worked like anything all month. Honest. Leroy. Well, I guess some kids are just naturally smarter than others, Unc. You remember what I told you last month? Yes, sir. You remember what the punishment was to be if your marks didn't improve? She have a heart, Unc. An understanding is an understanding, Leroy, and we had an understanding. Yes, sir. Now, where is that report card? It's here. Hmm. Don't go away. Arithmetic, A. History, A. English, A. Geography, A. Science. Well, they're all A's. Those are the breaks, kid. <laughs> Why, Leroy, that's wonderful. I fooled you that time. By George, you did. Why, that's wonderful. Why, I never got an A in my life. Gee, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> you don't see many kids get all A's on their report card. Had to work for that. You bet you did. And I just want to say, my boy, that's about the finest... Leroy, this isn't a forgery. Forgery? Oh! Uh, uh, I'm sorry, my boy. I apologize. Just comes a little suddenly, that's all. <coughs> Marjorie, what do you think of our little Leroy getting all A's? <coughs> oh, my goodness, I forgot all about the thermometer. Here, let me. What does it say? Wait till I look at it. How do you like me getting all A's, Marge? Great me. Why don't they make these darn things so you can read them? Oh, I hope it's normal. I hope it's normal. Oh, I had it there, and then I lost it. Well, turn it on so the light gets on it. <coughs> yeah, I've got it. Steady, steady. 99. No, no, it's not. It's normal. Hooray, I'm normal, I'm normal, and I'm super. <laughs> That's right, Marjorie's normal and Leroy is super. That's not easy getting all A's, you know it. You bet it's not. I'm very proud of you, my boy. <laughs> I'll let Marge my pistol, too. Oh, well. Bye, George, with Marjorie herself again and Leroy practically five better kappa, we're going to have to celebrate this. Huh. Oh, let's, let's have a celebration. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take you two kids to the downtown club tomorrow for lunch. How do you like that? Do they have ice cream there? Any kind you want. Oh, that'll be fun. You've never taken us there, Uncle Mort. Well, we're going tomorrow, because for once in his life, your old uncle is paid up. <laughs> Gosh, the downtown club. Can Piggy come along? Oh, I think it'd be more fun if we just kept it in the family, don't you? Yeah, I think so. No stranger, just the family. Okay. Say, Unc. Hmm? Speaking of strangers in the family... Marge and I were talking just now. Yes? Oh, Leroy. Well, why not? Because. Well, we've got him in a good mood. What's this all about? <laughs> well, Marge doesn't think I should say anything, but we were kind of worrying. I mean, well, it's about this Miss Del Rey. What about her? Oh, Leroy. Well, what about her? Well, what about her? <laughs> I wouldn't worry about her, my boy. She's nothing but a friend. I'm not even sure she's that after the other evening. Let's let Judge Hooker worry about her, shall we? Gosh, Unc, you're not as dumb as you seem. <laughs> <laughs> Little Leroy. Answer the door, will you, Leroy? Leroy. Uh, guess he's gone to bed. Good evening, Throckmorton. Eve. Well, this is an unexpected pleasure. Do come in. I can't stay, Throckmorton, but Leroy told me Marjorie's been quite sick. Well, Leroy's and... been exaggerating as usual. She's all right. Oh, I'm so glad. I brought her some grape jelly Mother put up last summer. Well, uh, now that's one thing your mother was good at. Really, Throckmorton? Uh, uh, all I mean is her jelly is magnificent. <laughs> Marjorie will be crazy about it. Uh, come in and sit down, Eve. Uh, take off your coat. Oh, I really mustn't. I want to get home in time to hear the symphony broadcast. Well, listen to it here. I like good music, too, you know. Do you, Clark Morton? Oh, uh, crazy about it. Here, I'll hang up your coat. <laughs> Thanks. Yes, sir. Now we can sit by the fire, talk, 
and listen to some nice classical music. Sofa? This chair is quite comfortable, really. Oh. <laughs> the fire's nice. Well, how was your party the other night? Party? Oh, uh, very pleasant. Too bad you couldn't come. Well, perhaps I can meet, um, Miss Del Rey, is it? Yeah, that's right. Perhaps I can meet her some other time. Uh, not so sure you'd like her, Eve. Why not? I saw her on the street the other day. She's quite beautiful. Oh, yes. But after all, what's beauty? A thing of the moment. It withers and fades. But you, Eve. Just how am I to take that, Rock Morton? <laughs> What did I say? Oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, don't get me wrong, Eve. I think you're pretty, too. I think you're beautiful. Only, well, you're not such a physical type. More mental. Oh? I mean, when I'm with you, I don't think of silly things as if you were just a woman. What do you think I am, Frank Nathan? Huh? <laughs> a woman is a woman. <laughs> Maybe I've been wrong about you, Eve. Maybe you have. You know, you're really very pretty, Eve. Thank you. I like your hair. It smells nice. <laughs> it's black. I like your eyes, too. Well? <sighs> when I'm with you, there's something about you that stirs me to the very depths. Do you mean that, Throckmorton? Do I? Shove over. <laughs> Hey, Eve, where are you going? The symphony, Throckmorton. You've forgotten I'm the mental type. Oh! <laughs> Tchaikovsky, a fine way to spend an evening. The Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds. Meanwhile, let me pass on a good word about the new Kraft Dinner. This famous macaroni and cheese still cooks in seven minutes. But the new Kraft Dinner gives you a richer, fuller cheese flavor. Just what you cheese lovers have been hankering for, the flavor of golden cheddar through and through a dish full of tender, fluffy, light macaroni. And to think you cook it in just seven minutes. When the folks taste the new Kraft Dinner, they'll say it's incredible that you could whip up such swell macaroni and cheese so fast. Kraft's tireless research, of course, is responsible for the goodness of the two ingredients in each Kraft dinner box. The special macaroni and the Kraft grater that gives such splendid cheese flavor. Let them work their speed magic in your kitchen to give you point-thrifty, good-eating main dishes. At your food store tomorrow, get a couple of packages of the new Kraft dinner. Each box makes enough for four servings and you get two boxes for one single red point. Now, let's get back to Summerfield, and in particular, the Downtown Businessmen's Club, where Gildersleeve is entertaining his niece and nephew at luncheon. Never has there been a merrier affair, or one where the ice cream flowed more freely. All through the meal, the great man has sat there cracking jokes and making puns, beaming upon his attractive niece, and urging Leroy to stuff himself in honor of his scholastic triumph. Oh, boy, get him! <laughs> oh, 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 Mort, people are looking at you. What do I care? I'm a member here. I can look cross-eyed if I want to. Oh, you're awful. <laughs> hey, Aunt, here's Judge Hooker trying to smile with his new teeth. <laughs> oh. oh, Leroy. Leroy, there's such a thing as carrying a good thing too far, my boy. Now, you calm down and finish your ice cream. The young lady's waiting to take your plate. Oh, you had enough? You got any more? <laughs> Leroy, you've had two orders. Well, I'm hungry. I worked hard this month. Yeah, bring the boy another ice cream. Not every month he gets all A's, is it, Leroy? I'll probably get A-plus next month. You'll probably get D-minus. Marjorie, another helping for you? Oh, no, I couldn't possibly. This is just perfect. It's been such fun, Uncle Mort. Bye, George. We must do this more often. Every Saturday. How about it, Uncle? Well, we'll see, my boy. It's been just like a family reunion. Sure. Marge, well again... Can you speaking to me again? <laughs> uh, you mustn't pay any attention to me, my boy. If I get a little preoccupied at times, I mean well, but I have things on my mind sometimes. Business and uh, uh, so on. Uncle Mort, let's all stick together. 
Why, certainly, my dear. Of course we'll stick together. The three musketeers, that's us. Yeah, all for one and one for all. And no outsiders. Sure. Leroy is Atos and you're Porthos and... No, no, you're Porthos, Unc. You're the fat one. (laughs) (laughs) Uncle Mort is not fat. He's just large. (laughs) Well, thank you, my dear. Well, here's your ice cream. Go ahead, Leroy. Hey, hey, Pam, look who just came in. Who? At that table over there. George Hooper. He has a lady with him. It's her. It's that Miss Del Rey. Eat your ice cream, Leroy. So that's Miss Del Rey. What did I tell you? Eat your ice cream. (laughs) The judge sees you, Uncle Morty. He's coming over. Yeah, what does he want, the old goat? Haven't spoken to him since that evening. If he Well, thinks... well, well. Having a little party, I see. Good day, Throckmorton. Good day. Marjorie. Leroy. Hello, Judge. Hi. Nice to see you about again, Marjorie. Thank you. Nice to see you, too, Throckmorton. Thank you. I, um... Uh... Sorry you're otherwise engaged, Throckmorton, or I'd ask you to join Miss Del Rey and myself at the... our table. I've had my luncheon, thank you. You might like to know it was Miss Del Rey who suggested it. Miss Del Rey means nothing to me, Judge. Nothing whatever. And you mean less. (laughs) Oh, pardon me. Pardon me for intruding. Pardon me for living. I hadn't noticed it. (laughs) What's the matter, Rock? What are you so upset about? Eat your confounded ice cream and let's get out of here. I gotta get to the office. Seven from fourteen is seven, and one to carry. Eight and one is nine, and thirteen is. <sighs> is anything I hate worse than adding? It's subtracting. <laughs> How Leroy ever got an A? <laughs> Don't sneak up on me like that, Bessie. You startled me. Yes, sir. A good secretary knocks before she enters. Oh, excuse me, I just wanted to ask you something, but you're busy. I'll come back. Well, you've interrupted me now. You might as well spill it. Yes, sir. Well, you see, there's a cousin of mine. I mean, he's a sort of cousin. We're not sure. He's a staff sergeant, and he's in town now on on furlough. So, I mean, uh, well, could I take the rest of the afternoon off? Confounded, Bessie. I'll not have the routine of this office upset by staff sergeants. Yes, sir. And that's final. Yes, sir. Let me get back to my work. And by the way, I want you to get me the figures on the cash receipts for 1938, 39, and 40. Yes, sir. Seven from 14. Well, Bessie, what is it? Mr. Gildersleeve, weren't you ever young yourself once? Come here, Bessie. Yes, sir. I didn't mean to be unkind, but work is work, you know. Work is important. How old are you, Bessie? Nineteen. Nineteen. I suppose young men seem pretty important to you right now, don't they? Well, they're awfully scarce, good ones. (laughs) Yes, I suppose so. I suppose you think a lot about love and all that. Well, I'm human, Mr. Gildersleeve. I dare say. (laughs) You know, Bessie, when you get to be my age, you'll find that things change a lot. You'll discover that love is an illusion, really. Just one of those things that pass. Mm, I guess you must have had some bad luck, huh? Uh, uh -huh. (laughs) It's not just that. There comes a time when a man has to face the fact that he'll probably never marry. That he'll always be a bachelor. Always a little lonely. Then nothing matters to him but work. Work, work, work. Work is man's salvation. You'll discover that when you're my age, Bessie. Yes, sir. But right now I'm 19. (laughs) All right, Bessie, run along. Run along to your staff sergeant. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, thank you. Oh, oh, what was it you wanted me to get the uh, cash receipt? Yeah, for 38, 39, and 40. Uh, Never mind, I'll find it myself. Run along. (laughs) Shall I lock up Mr. Gildersleeve? I'll do that, Bessie. Never mind. Bye. Goodbye. Have a good time. Uh, have a good time. Don't mind me. Uh, uh, work. Probably be here till all hours. Just a cold sandwich and a cup of coffee to keep me going. That's all I need. Two, three o'clock in the morning, still working. Maybe she'll pass by on her way home from some gay party and see my light still burning here. Working. Oh, well, let's see. Where was I? I have to start over again here. Hmm. Seven. Fourteen is seven. 
seven, from fourteen is seven. Each time I cling to your kiss, I hear music divine. Oh, nuts, gotta get to work. <laughs> work, work, work. Well, I can't go any further till I get those figures for the cash receipts. Where the devil could Bessie put them? That girl. Well, maybe they're in her file. Oh, it's getting cold up here. I suppose they turn off all the heat at six o'clock. Uh, cash receipts, that's more like it. Uh, here we are, 1938, 39, and 40. Who's that? It is me, Dolores. Oh. Uh, if you're looking for Judge Hooker's chambers, Miss Del Rey, they're on the next floor, down the hall. But I'm not looking for Judge Hooker. I'm looking for Water Commissioner Gildersleeve. That is you, no? Yeah, I'm the commissioner. What can I do for you? I wish to make a complaint, Senor Commissioner. A very serious complaint. Oh? Huh? What's the matter? No water? No. No commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> Why have you not come to see me, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, uh... Are you angry with me? No. Then what is it? Well, the party at my house the other night... Oh, the party was lovely. I enjoyed it. You walked out on it. Oh, the judge practically dragged me away. I suppose he dragged you to lunch at the downtown club today. Mm, he told me I would see you there, and I did see you. But you did not see me. Oh, yes, I did. If it's your idea of fun to have lunch with an old crumb like Hooker, well, go ahead. I have lunch with him every day. Ah, oh, oh, you funny man. Why do you think I came up here? I can't imagine. Oh, foolish. The judge is very sweet, but he's very old. Oh? He's like Santa Claus. Or, or my grandfather. I want to talk to someone with a little sparkle in his eye. Someone with youth and strength and zoom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> senor, senor, what are you tearing up? The cash receipt for 1938, 39, and 40. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to announce that our program next week will originate at the Navy Pier in Chicago in connection with a sixth war loan drive. I hope you'll all be listening. But you don't have to wait till end to buy a bond. Hi, Chief. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> program was directed by Claude Sweeten. This is Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Kraft invites you to listen again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Until the war is won, you homemakers won't be able to buy all the delicious Pabstet cheese food you want because vast quantities of dairy foods are being sent to our fighting fronts. But remember, each package of golden, delicious Pabstet cheese food you do buy goes a long way by lending its mellow, appetizing cheese flavor to other nourishing foods. You see, Pabstet melts with luscious smoothness, so it's easy to whip up tempting Pabstet omelets, Welsh rabbits, souffles, and to prepare all kinds of grand macaroni and cheese dishes with Pabstet. You can get delicious sandwich variety with Pabstet, too, because it blends so smoothly with other ingredients. Pabstet is high in milk protein, helps provide food energy, milk minerals, important vitamin A and vitamin G, also known as riboflavin. So look for, ask for, and when you can, buy this delicious, nourishing cheese food, Pabstet. This is the National Broadcasting Company.